Fire. 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 Fire upon my enemies. Fire upon my ancestral background. Fire in every corner where there is evil against me. Anyone who does not want my peace, receive fire. Fire upon every evil spirit that tries to hinder my progress. Fire upon all curses. Fire on anyone who speaks ill of me. Fire, fire, fire. I declare fire upon every obstacle in my life. Fire on all my problems. Fire on everything and everyone that stands against me. Amen, amen, amen. Let me check my time. Wow. Complete two hours of fired prayers. Hallelujah. Yes, I've done it. I've beaten the time. I've prayed longer and harder than anyone else. I've fulfilled every scripture and more. I am set to fly now. But who would be knocking on my door now? Let me go check. Oh, Martha. You came at the right time. I just finished calling down fire and prayer for over two hours. And just yesterday, I completed 28 days of fire prayers. Please, come in. Yes, I heard. You were shouting and screaming fire a lot. Honestly, Sarah, I think you might be disturbing your neighbors. That's the point, Martha. They need to hear it. The fire will burn all of them if they don't let me have my peace. It's only a witch or wizard that wouldn't be comfortable with my fire prayers. Even Daniel in the Bible prayed three times a day. Yes, Daniel prayed three times a day, but he wasn't disturbing his neighbors with shouts of fire. Sarah, there's a biblical way to pray and that's not shouting and screaming fire. Are you saying you don't agree with my prayers, Martha? Maybe you are a witch too. Sarah, calling someone a witch is serious. The Bible says in Matthew 5:44, But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Prayer should be done with a spirit of love and not just shouting fire. I actually came here to invite you to Bible study. I've noticed you haven't been coming. I've been missing it because I needed to deal with the foundations of wickedness in my life by fire. Besides, I can study the Bible on my own. Studying the Bible with others can provide new insights and help you grow in your faith. Hebrews 10.25 says, Not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. We can learn so much from each other, Sarah. I appreciate the offer, Martha, but I need to focus on my fire prayers right now. All right, Sarah. Just remember, prayer is powerful, but it should also align with God's word. I'll see you around. All right, see you. I just don't understand. Why won't Sarah study the Bible? Shouting fire for hours. Does she think that's what God wants? Prayer is powerful, yes, but without the word, it's incomplete. It's like she's missing the point entirely. Prayer isn't just about yelling and making noise. It's about connecting with God, understanding his will through the scriptures. She needs balance, not just fire, fire, fire. Lord, please help Sarah see the importance of your word. Help her find the balance she needs. She's so passionate, but passion without direction can lead to spray. Maybe if I keep inviting her, she'll come around. I can't give up on her. She needs to understand that studying the Bible is just as important as prayer. Leave me alone, Satan. Leave me alone. <laughs> what did you say? Leave me alone, Satan. Leave me alone. Okay, okay. You want me to get out of your life? Yes. Get away from me. Give me one reason why I should leave you alone. Yes. I'm a Christian. 
I attend church. That isn't a good enough reason. There are many who go to church yet remain under my captivity. I have known the existence of church even before you were born. What is the basis, why I should leave you? Okay, what else should I say now? Yes. I pray and fast. I scream fire every time. Oh, did you not read in the scriptures where I confronted and tempted Jesus right after he finished his prayer and fasting in the wilderness? You're not serious. I like Christians like you. You're an easy prey. They are the reason why it looks as if I'm very strong. Fire on you, Satan. I cut off your tail. I blind you. <laughs> Such amusing words. But tell me, do you really think these your declarations have any power over me? I cut off your wings. I send you to the abyss. Fire on you, Satan. Shut your mouth. Since you can't prove your freedom, take your bondages. Here's poverty. No. Here's sicknesses. No. No. And here are your ancestral curses. Oh no. Remain under bondage all your life, just like every other person who couldn't give a strong reason. No. Please, no. <coughs> what? That was a dream? Oh my god, that was a terrible dream. Satan wants to afflict me. Who do I run to now? I need to go see the prophets and prophetess, who will command the devil out of my life. But how do I see them now, will they grant me access? If I can only see the prophets, I know I would be set free. Oh my. I'm just confused right now. I don't understand. Why did this happen? What did I do wrong? I pray, I fast. I scream fire. Isn't that enough? He said my shouting is useless that I'm an easy prey. How could that be? I'm a Christian, I go to church. I do everything right. He gave me poverty, sickness, curses. How do I fight that? How do I make him leave me alone? I need answers. I need help. I'm sure Brother Paul will know what to do. He has to know what to do. I have to go see him, he should be able to help me. I don't know what else to do. <laughs> Brother Paul, I've prayed and fasted so much, yet I'm still wallowing in poverty. Things have been so hard. I've spent all my savings on hospital bills, going from one doctor to another. My family background is full of ancestral curses. I just can't move forward. I'm so tired of everything. I just want to quit. Sarah, what happened? Why do you feel like this? Ever since I had a horrible encounter with Satan in my dream months ago, things have got worse. I'm just so tired. What did you do after the dream? I waited to see the prophets, but I haven't been able to get access to any of them. Sarah, you shouldn't have waited for any prophet. You should be the prophet of your own life. The Bible says, the power of life and death is in the tongue, Proverbs 18.21. A closed mouth is a closed destiny. You shall declare a thing, and it shall be established, Job 22.28. Do not idolize going to see prophet when you can stand and speak into your life. But I did scream and pray, and Satan still wouldn't listen. Who shall say a thing and it will stand when the Lord has not commanded it? Lamentations 3.37. Sister Sarah, yes, you are praying and fasting, but you need to know the Word of God, which is the sword of the Spirit. 
You see, when Satan tempted Jesus in the wilderness, Jesus didn't go about shouting, screaming or making some unbiblical statements, he kept saying it is written, it is written, it is written remains our weapon for overcoming the devil, not shouting or screaming. Oh. Is that where my problem is coming from? Yes. With the word of God, you will win all your battles. The word of God is quick, and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Hebrews 4.12 you need to use the word. Okay. But, how will it solve my poverty and financial problems? Sister Sarah, it is written, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. 2 Corinthians 8, 9 And also, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Philippians 4:19. In 3 John 1, 2, the Bible say, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. God have made provision for your prosperity and no power can hinder you. Okay, but, what about my sicknesses? It is also written, but he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Isaiah 53, 5. Sickness is not your portion. Christ has already taken it away. Really? All right, but what about my ancestral curses? They say that anyone from my background doesn't grow old, doesn't marry, and doesn't have children. Sarah, you are now from the lineage of Christ. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, 2 Corinthians 5.17. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, 1 Peter 2.9. You are a child of God, adopted into his family. Those curses have no power over you anymore. Wow. I'm really amazed. Thank you, Brother Paul. I'll start studying and reading the scriptures as you said. I want to learn and use the Word of God in my life. That's the truth, Sarah. Remember, with the Word of God, you will win all your battles. I'll be here to help you every step of the way. Thank you. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. 2 Corinthians 8, 9. Through his poverty, I may become rich. But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus, Philippians 4.19. God shall supply all my needs. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed, Isaiah 53, 5. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, 2 Corinthians 5.17. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, 1 Peter 2, 9. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth, 3 John 1, 2. Satan, leave my life alone. I confess the word of God. I come against you with the sword of the Spirit. For with his stripes, I am healed. I am a new creature in Christ. Old things are passed away. All things are become new. I am chosen, I am royalty, I am holy, I am peculiar. I will prosper and be in health, even as my soul prospers. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Acts 19.20 I will surely prevail even as the word of God grows in my life. Yes. Yes. Hey, you. Where have you kept all the luggage I gave you? It is written. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. John 8.36 Therefore, 
I'm free. What? Wow, how come? It is written the entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple, Psalm 119, 130. I can't be kept in darkness anymore. Okay. Fine, but you will remain in poverty. It is written for ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that, though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich, 2 Corinthians 8, 9. Hence, I'll never experience poverty or lack in my life again. Huh. Hum. What about all your sicknesses? It is written, but he was wounded for my transgressions, he was bruised for my iniquities, the chastisement of my peace was upon him, and with his stripes, I am healed, Isaiah 53, 5. Hence, I'm healed and delivered from all manner of sicknesses. And the curse is from your background. Remember, none from your background grow old, marry, or have children. Therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, 2 Corinthians 5.17. It is also written that Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, Galatians 3.13. No, this can't be. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, Revelation 12.11. I command you, in the name of Jesus, leave my life with all your luggage and never return. By the authority given to me by Jesus Christ, I cast you out. No. Please wait. I will go. I'm taking all my luggage off your life. Please. He's gone. Thank you, Jesus. <sighs> thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Father, I thank you for your word that is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Thank you for equipping me with the truth to stand against the enemy. Lord, I praise you for the victory you have given me. You have shown me that through your word, I have the power to overcome all the plans of the enemy. Thank you for making me more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Lord, I will continue to immerse myself in your word. I will meditate on your promises day and night, knowing that they are my shield and my fortress. Thank you for this revelation for showing me the power of your word. From this day forward, I will not only pray but also declare your word with authority. I know now that it is not by my shouting or fasting alone, but by the power of your word that I will overcome. Thank you, Jesus, for setting me free. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed, John 8 36. I am free, I am victorious, and I am yours forever. Sarah, I. I don't quite know how to explain this. What is it, Doctor? Is it bad news? Quite the opposite, actually. We have run multiple tests, double-checked everything. And there's no trace of the blood disease that you've been battling for years. What? How is that possible? Your blood is as pure as that of a newborn baby. There are no health conditions whatsoever. It's like the disease was never there. Oh my God. Thank you, Jesus. Sarah, what have you been doing differently? This is nothing short of a miracle. Doctor, it's the power of God. I've been immersing myself in the Word, declaring His promises over my life. Whatever it is, it's remarkable. In all my years of practice, I've never seen anything like this. Thank you, Doctor. But all the glory goes to God. He has healed me. I'm free. By his stripes, I am healed, Isaiah 53, 5. He truly has set me free. Well, I'm happy for you, Sarah. Whatever you're doing, keep doing it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for my healing. Mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Acts 19, 20. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for watching. 
please like, share, and subscribe. God bless you.